All right, guys, this is Chris Mincola with the Mincola Group over at West USA Realty, and we're doing our weekly market update. Just want to go ahead and start sharing my screen here with you. It is going to be interesting what we go over today, kind of re very revealing on some stuff that's been going on and to really make you aware of uh, that you can be prepared. So here we go. Um, feds, the Fed's own Christopher Wallace or Waller, I'm sorry says post-pandemic response to inflation was not textbook. Oh, you mean what we've been saying all along? You know, remember when they were talking about transitory inflation and all that kind of nonsense? Well, that wasn't the case, was it? And again, why is this happening? Why do we have inflation? Too much money chasing, chasing too few goods, okay? They print too much money. They printed too much money too fast. Uh, we had all the pandemic spending. We had uh, Republicans and uh, Democrats last year come together for, uh, you know, trillions in spending. You know, the the Inflation Reduction Act that was actually more of a Inflation Production Act because it printed more money. When you print money, when you print more money, um, and you're not having a balanced budget, and you're paying on more debt, which is what's happening, uh, which I'll get into a little bit more in a minute. Uh, you know, that's a big problem that I think maybe some are starting to come to terms with, but printing too much money is the biggest driving cause. And then you have this, you know, all these uh, wonderful uh, concepts, I guess you could call them, of green energy, but a lot of them just aren't really feasible. And when they say, well, it's subsidized this way or that way, you figure out, well, it's actually just printing more money to subsidize subsidize that, those programs, or using tax dollars to subsidize these programs. So nobody's really saving any money in the end because you're getting taxed through inflation. So when it costs more money to transport goods or buy more goods uh, that are transported, um, or you're, you know, you may have noticed your uh, electric bill go up uh, over the last few months. You're, maybe, you're, maybe your maybe uh, your uh, gas bill has gone up, maybe double or triple, depending on what area of the country you're in. And you know, gas prices they were under control maybe for a little while, a little bit, no, nowhere near where they were a few years ago uh, when we were down near like a buck eighty nine a gallon. But you know, we see that uh, gas needs drilling and fracking and and all these sorts of things that we we get into whether we're talking about you know natural gas or or oil and we have we have the Saudi Arabia of natural gas right under our feet here in this country in many spots you know around Pennsylvania uh in Alaska you know so you know you you can think what you want about the environmentalist portion but we're actually dropping our emissions faster than any other country on the planet um, but anyway, I'm not going to get into the political side of that. I'm just saying, if you want to play all those games, you're going to have to, it's going to cost you more to do everything, to eat, to go buy a house, whatever it is, it's going to cost you more money. It's, those are all inflationary factors. And that's a fact. So it's a bloodbath out there, but there's some good news too. We'll get into both. Redfin reports, um, Rents rose 2% uh, in January, the smallest increase in 20 months. That's good because uh, shelter costs make up about 44% of the inflation rate overall. So once the Fed gets caught up on that, which a lot of people are sounding the alarm, you know, like, hello, hello, Housing Water has been putting it out, uh, Redfin, a lot of other people like, hello, we're, we're caught up. You're not caught up yet on these shelter costs, which are which are driven by, they, they look, they're indicated of rents, what what a property may list for. They do these surveys and everything. I'm not going to get into it. I've talked about it a couple of times already in a different couple of different podcasts, but that's already happened. It, it, the rate of increase has come way down on rents. So that's the national news here in the Phoenix area. Um, you know, rent prices um, did increase 10% from August of 2022 to August of 2023. Um, although that has uh, also slowed down a little bit here. Um, in, in, and uh, we're, we're seeing the effects of that too. Real quick on commercial. Um, one of the things that I, I, I came across uh, this week was, uh, where, where did I see it here? Oh, uh, yeah. Fed's uh, bar... Um, 
representative, bank supervisors closely focused on commercial real estate risks. What's that code for? Uh, that's probably going to mean that we're going to see a lot more bank mergers coming in the future. Okay. We already had some bank issues before. We're going to see some more bank issues. So for commercial, um, that, that, that's been an issue. But for Phoenix, we're seeing that, you know, our uh, office rates continue rising despite available office space, even approaching 20%. Um, so uh, we're, we're growing here in the Phoenix area uh, when it comes to in most areas of Phoenix uh, metropolitan area, when it comes to uh, office spaces and uh, those sorts of things. A lot of people though are not buying, they're renting their spaces because of the volatility in the market though. And that's across the country, a lot of places across the country, even in Phoenix. So um, but, uh, Phoenix home sale, uh, time on market sees second biggest decrease in the U S the number of homes actively for sale was notably higher compared to last year, growing by 7.9%, according to realtor.com January housing report released today. So number of homes for sale was notably higher compared to last year. Now, I'm looking at my MLS right now. I'll pull it right in here for you so you can see what I'm looking at. And, you know, is it higher? Yeah, okay. Uh, 16,444. Uh, we've been running in, in, you know, in the 15,000. So is it a little bit higher? Yeah. Is is it the time of year to expect that? Yeah. Um, you know, do I see any issue there? No. Those are all property types too, by the way. So anyway, uh, that uh, brings me to the next trend. So Metro Phoenix housing data shows more positive than negative trends. I'm not going to get into all of them. We've kind of talked about them before. A lot of people are moving here from other states. We're like ranked number four overall. Uh, but cities with the biggest rent decline in 2023, overall decline increase, okay? The rate of increase decline. Because remember the rates, it said 10% from 2022 to 2023, August to August, year over year. But the rate of increase has come down. So cities with the biggest rate declines, that means rate of increase, Phoenix at 2.2%, Okay. So that's good news for renters. Um, that's good news for shelter costs. That's good news for overall inflation um, in our area, in our economy. Uh, construction boom may help slow Phoenix area rent growth. Now, there are a lot of multifamily uh, apartment complexes. There are even what are considered single family detached communities going in all around the valley that are that are rentals, okay? Um, so uh, we're seeing a lot more of that to kind of get, and, and that could be a factor in, you know, eating up some of the absorption that's needed, you know, for people who want to rent and getting those prices down. So um, note that the, you know, not that you can't make money on rentals, but you're going to have the rate of increase slowed. And this is just kind of the overall numbers right now, the average lease 2259. Those are the latest numbers from January, 2024 average days on market for rents 52. So again, it's important to kind of look at the rents just because they do affect inflation, which does affect mortgage rates and a shelter costs with the rents is about 44% of that inflation. So even though they keep printing the money and everything, it's good news that those rent prices, those rent price increases, rate of increase has slowed big time. Okay. So builder confidence is at its highest level since August. That's good. Right now across the country, there's about a million, um, they would say millions uh, properties, you know, being built. Uh, they'd like to see closer to 1.2, but keep in mind, a lot of those are already under contract, maybe about half or close to half are already under contract. We've talked about this in the past. So, you know, for, um, you know, uh, a family starting out, even though maybe that slowed up a little bit with affordability right now, people maybe living with their parents a little bit longer, they're still seeing about 1.3, 1.4, you know, um, you know, family starting up every year. So, you know, definitely have to play catch up because new inventory in reality for the sales market and residential sales is a new build. It's not somebody selling a property and moving up or moving down because that kind of cancels each other out. Although it may give a little bit more options out there for the move up or move down or first time home buyer, but that is kind of a negative or, or, or kind of a neutral 
you know, were selling and buying. Okay. So it's good news. They're getting a lot of permits here in the Phoenix area started up, which is great. U.S. inflation hotter than expected in January. We talked about this a little bit before, but we the, the latest numbers show uh, you know, we've got issues, you know, if you, again, gas prices, uh, your, your natural gas, you know, for your heating, your home, um, your insurance cost insurance has gone up. What is it like? Uh, where is it on here? Is it 20 or 30% um, motor vehicle insurance up 20%. That's motor vehicle. I think overall in insurance though, uh, maybe it's not on here. Overall insurance is like 30% increase. Um, I think I heard a couple of days ago. So um, the, the, those those numbers are still up. Are they down overall? Like, you know, overall inflation, when you average everything up, you know, uh, a, a year ago, a little over a year ago was 9%. Um, you know, and now it's a lower increase, at least in some sectors of the of the uh, of the products that we're consuming and stuff. But uh, I mean, look at juice and drinks. Why is that going? What, what's the? Oh, maybe it's because of the plastic bottles. That's petroleum. Hmm. Need those leases to open up there, government. Got to open up them leases for that. Pla you know, you get, you, what are you going to do? How are you going to replace plastic? What are you going to replace it with? Glass? And go back to glass? I don't know. It's crazy. Mortgage rates edge up after latest inflation reading. Okay. So we had... <laughs> The CBO, the Congressional uh, Budget Office, uh, I, I'm kind of getting a little in depth here with with you guys a little bit, but uh, I'm not going to go into the details of this too much. But they projected debt will reach 1.144 trillion by 2053. Sounds like a long way off. Who cares? Blah blah blah. One million per American household. Okay, and then it goes into the details of it. But that is insane. Okay, when you look at the net worth of a median household. That's four times. So they've got to get the spending under control, stop the CRs. They've got to have real balanced budgets like everybody does in their own house, um, even though because of the inflation, we're getting taxed so much through inflation on top of the regular taxes that everything costs so much that, you know, a lot of people are having to use credit cards and stuff. So it's a real, it's a real crunch for people, you know, we totally get that. So this hopefully, although, you know, if you go through it in, in some of their uh, ideas, it's not really deep enough cuts. Um, so hopefully they wake up. But again, that shelter cost thing, hopefully that's part of a saving grace besides hopefully deeper cuts in the printing of money. Uh, so Jerome Powell's like, see, I told you so. Okay, we gotta we gotta keep rates. You know, we gotta be slow about this. We gotta be old and slow uh, when it comes to lowering those Fed's fund rates. Um, so the construction numbers don't mirror growing building optimism across the country because um, you know of the affordability factor. So a lot of builders are building smaller homes. Uh, we're seeing this in our area. Um, but in, in the Phoenix area, they're, they're very confident in building residential homes uh, just because our economy is stronger. People are moving here and we've got all kinds of businesses and jobs opening up. So um, anyway, the, 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 that's more of a this is more of a national thing here. Now, with the, uh, you know, uh, the uh, inflation rate, CPI, PPI, even crazier, uh, the bond market went nuts today. Um you know, part of it could be this whole thing with the Fed, you know, we, we're up. And then the other Fed guy saying, we're down, we're up, we up. You know, Jerome's like, oh, you know, we got some volatility and in the inflation rate. What's going on here? What do we do? So everything is up. That means your mortgage rate, um, oh, I thought I had it here for you guys. Sorry about that. Goes up. Okay. So again, keep in mind, these are average retail rate numbers for 30 year fixed. 15 years, a little bit lower as usual, but those are, those are averages. If you go with a mortgage broker, you know, you know, look into, you know, have a higher credit rating, go go with a mortgage broker. They can shop the best rates. There'll be a lot less on pricing and all, all that jazz. So we, we always recommend that as an option and something to look at and compare numbers on. Um, the uh, Crawford market index. Hey, it's just kind of hanging there. Hello. Anything under 90 is a buyer's market. Anything over 110 
is a seller's market. And it's pretty much where it was last week, 117.4. Last week it was 117.5. Technically in a seller's market overall for the greater Phoenix area. Demand, uh, 77.1. Last week it was 76.2. So up a little bit. And for the Phoenix area. And then supply index is 65.7. Um, and last week it was 64.9. So little adjustments there in supply and demand. But overall, that's where we are. Active listing counts. Um, those are definitely up. Some people are worried about that. I think it's great. Gives people more options, uh, maybe softens a little bit of the market, uh, uh, temporarily anyway, until, uh, people really get into buying in the spring season. Uh, but again, I showed you the inventory. There's nothing crazy going on there with inventory. It's, it's not, it's not, you know, nothing, not, nothing nuts. Median agent days on market at contract. We're at 28 that's going down, okay? So thing that means going under contract quicker. That's a good thing, okay, for sellers. Um, so a pretty brisk market getting under contract within about 28 days on, on that median number. Um, listings under contract, uh, we see the number, let's see, we see the numbers up. Uh, listing under contract saw last year at the same time was 60.6. Right now we're under contract 59.9 for this time year over year within the calendar year. And so it's a little bit slower for listings under contract than last year at the same time, uh, getting through January and uh, February, but uh, nothing like, ooh, so much different, it's going nuts, okay. So we'll just kind of see, I think I think a lot of people are, you know, they can't afford to enter the market right now or they're just gonna wait and, and see, which, you know, I, I could totally understand right now with all the question marks, but I do think overall we're going to see some rate cuts this year. Um, and I think we'll start seeing them in the spring, probably around May-ish um, is is the new target point that they're they're talking about out there. I don't think we're going to see this continued uh, uh, volatility overall with the inflation because of the shelter cost numbers, although we you got to call call your call your people your local representatives you know national I, i'm calling and say look stop the spending i want balance i don't want more inflation we don't need more inflation we can't have more inflation let's take care of what we got going on at home guys right so the overall um cities uh again doing pretty well uh you know we're we're seeing each each city right now chandler's at the top of the list for a seller's market bottom of the list for buyers at the, in a buyer's market uh frenzy is maricopa city and right in the mid range is actually uh scottsdale at 126 so they're over 110 that puts them in a seller's market um in a balance market cave creek paradise valley surprise and good year. Those are in balanced markets. So um, I think that's all I'm going to give you today because that was a lot of information. 